Welcome back, Heat Seekers. Hopefully, week three treated you well. We've got a bunch more IDPs for your waiver wire targets. As always, if you have questions, drop them in the comments. If you need our help, find us on rotoheat.com or in our Discord. With that being said, let's get to it. Craig is going to give us some wisdom on which linebackers we need to jump onto this week. Which ones do you love and what do you love about them? Yeah, so we're going to start off with Zaire Franklin. He's been filling in for Shaq Leonard for the Colts, and he's a top 30 linebacker in most formats. The only really thing to pay attention to here is when does Shaq Leonard come back, but he's getting 100% snap share. He's got like 30 tackles combined on the year, so he's pretty much a guy that you want to have in your lineup if you're going to be starting three linebackers, two in a flex, something like that. Darius Leonard's another one, sort of a same situation. He ended up getting about a 87% snap share in week three with Willie Gay suspended. Willie Gay will be suspended another three weeks. And he had, uh, Leonard that is, had 13 combined tackles. So he just did great next to Nick Bolton. And it looks like he's going to be the guy there. Drew Tranquil is a guy who has taken over the starting linebacker position for the Chargers. He's got about a 74% snap share with about 24 combined tackles, interception, a couple pass deflections on the year. Kyle Van Noy is also there, but he's just more of a savvy veteran at this point. It doesn't seem like Kenneth Murray is going to end up being a thing for the Chargers. The other big name here that we have, and this is for Austin, who's on our IDP team. You can find him over on Twitter. He also does articles and did the IDP show with us this offseason. But Malcolm Rodriguez, I threw him on the list here. He's been getting increased playing time each of the past three weeks. He's gotten six combined tackles week one and then eight and eight this past week. And, you know, Alex Anzalone is the guy who's getting the higher snap share, but Rodriguez seems to be the sort of the fan favorite, coaching staff favorite, and with that increased snap share, he really could be a guy that ended up being a league winner based on where he got him this year. I'm the Lions fan, and Austin is the Malcolm Rodriguez fan club owner, operator. I think he might even have a Malcolm Rodriguez autograph on his, you know, on his back, it's tattooed or something. Yeah, the thing I would, you know, stress with folks with the Detroit thing is they've got a lot of injuries they're dealing with now, so that'll be interesting to see what it does to this defense. Tracy Walker's got a season-ending Achilles injury, and you know, and they're obviously their defensive line is still fighting a bunch of of injuries. You know, uh, Levi and Wuzuriki and some of those. So Malcolm Rodriguez is is, is going to see the field. He may even see the field more because even at at Oklahoma State they had him playing in the secondary and doing some things. So this kid may be may see an increased snap share because so far we don't know what Detroit's doing with that that issue with uh, Tracy Walker specifically. So definitely something to monitor that Detroit defense is on the field enough and and you know it'll be interesting to see what they do with that moving on to dbs what are we doing here i know our our boy richie grant finally made the list but uh what's going on with these guys yeah we got a lot of names that people have heard before uh, for various reasons you know richie grant didn't do much last year after being a second round pick of the falcons you know he barely played and when he did play it really wasn't even at safe he was cornerback but the uh, coaching staff invested in him, and he got stuff turned around. He's got 100% snap share on the year. He's a top 15 safety in most formats. The Atlanta offense has been better than expected, which has led to more secondary opportunities as the opposing team to throw in the ball. Promising player like that's going to be rostered in Dynasty, but in redraft leagues, he's still widely available and has earned a spot. Brandon Jones is another guy. Um, the highest roster guy that we've talked about in the past three weeks over on ESPN, he's at 34%. The other sites he's in single digits or not at all. So again, know your site, know your format, all that stuff. But Brandon Jones is a top 20 safety on the year after sort of being a second banana name wise to Javon Holland last year, after the year that Holland had Holland's usage has changed. Whereas Brandon Jones is, has over half his snaps along the defensive line or in the box and getting those tackles, which is what you want, you know, out of a safety. Chuck Clark is a guy that we've talked about before many times, and there was a lot of scuttlebutt about would he lose his job sort of with Kyle Hamilton coming in, Marcus Williams signing that big contract. Hasn't happened. He's got 100% snap share through the first three games, 46% of his snaps on the line are in the box. They still have unresolved linebacker issues there, which it seems like we've been saying for five years anyway. So he's he's up there. He's getting a, new, a nice, safe tackle floor, and he's not going to, by and large, make huge explosive plays. But if you're looking for a film that's going to get you tackles and not mess up, especially with how explosive, it's kind of like we talked about before, with how that offense is with Baltimore, too, he's going to have opportunity. And our cornerback. So 
Traverius Ward is a guy I'd prefer on the 49ers, but if you're in a league that requires cornerbacks, he's probably rostered. But Emmanuel Mosley has played a little bit more than him. They're both like in the 98, 90, 98, 99% snap shares. Mosley has 10 solos, three assists, two tackles for a loss, and they're bringing on the Rams, who are top three in points allowed to opposing cornerbacks. So a lot of opportunity coming up this next week. Definitely, definitely an interesting group of players, and uh, I love the list because these are some guys that we've been fans of. So it's nice to see. Uh, we'll pat ourselves on the back, but it's nice to see that that you know these guys are finally showing out. Let's finish it off with defensive linemen. So we've got some D one that's currently going as as the Cowboys yep. are playing on Monday night. What uh, what's going on here? So Dorrance Armstrong is a guy that we bandied about in our chats about whether to include him or not. And the whole reason we haven't at this point is just that snap share is lower than we'd want. He's sitting in the mid-40s, excluding this Monday night game. Of course, we don't know where he's at if it's going on. But he and Micah Parsons are sort of splitting that uh, cross from Demarcus Lawrence spot as far as that edge rusher. So the opportunity isn't as high as some other people, but he has gotten four solos, two assists, two tackles for a loss, and two sacks on the year. That is not counting the Giants game where he already has another sack tackle for a loss and a couple QB hits. So, you know, the end of the game stat line will be nice. He's producing in limited opportunities. And this next week they face the Commanders, who are, again, top three team in points allowed to opposing defensive ends. So, you know, he's sort of out there as a designated pass rusher. He's going to get those opportunities again next week, and it's a great spot for him. One of them just to throw out there. I was looking all over and uh, talk about knowing your system and all that. Some sites, this guy's a linebacker, some places he's an edge, some places he's both defensive end. But Jason Pierre Paul finally put mm -hmm. uh, into paper for the Baltimore Ravens, and they're going to need him with Justin Houston banged up. Yep. I'm not thinking this week he's going to come out and just go gangbusters, but he's finally healthy after playing much of last year injured. He's in a good situation and not week four. I'm looking at, but week five, they're facing the Bengals, who still apparently don't know how to protect Joe Burrow. It's going to be in a great spot after having, you know, that week to get his feet wet and get into the system. So looking a little bit ahead, but if JPP's out there, if you're getting a free waiver wire ad, not a bad guy to bank on. Absolutely. Other defensive end is Rasheem Green. It looks a little weird when you go look at him because he didn't play week one. But uh, he is getting about a 54 to 57% snap share. And in the two weeks that he has played, he has eight solos, four assists, and two sacks. He's showing out really well on that defensive line. And in week four, they are facing the Chargers, who are top 10 in most points allowed to opposing defensive ends and just mm -hmm. lost starting tackle Sean Slater. So they're continuing to be banged up all across the board for the Chargers. Makes for a nice recipe for a guy that is being productive. Finally, our defensive tackle, a name that we haven't mentioned, I don't think, ever before on our show. Nope. Shy Tuttle, defensive tackle for the New Orleans Saints. So he's leading them as far as defensive tackles with about a 62.5% snap share, nine solos, nine assists, and a half a sack. It's not going gangbusters, of course, but he's getting you that solid tackle floor that we like to see when you're picking up a waiver wire defensive tackle. Facing the Vikings this coming week, which they're in the top half in terms of points allowed to defensive tackles. So decent situation and... Just keep an eye on that because that is the London game coming up this week. And we weren't shy about Tuttle, but he hasn't really truly been productive the way that that you know has, has gotten him on our waiver wire. Yep. He has now though. So that's my Craig moment of the show. Thank you guys as always for checking this out. Hopefully it's helped. And if you need some more help, if maybe you've got deeper rosters, because we do know that some of you are just like us and have even deeper rosters than than some of what we we bring up here, put your guys in the comments. Go to Discord. We've got an IDP-specific chat. Discord is free for the Roto Heat people. So you just jump on there and talk with us. We will help you in whatever way we can because that's what we're here to do. We appreciate you guys. We love you all. And we'll see you next week.